In today's video, I'm going to drop some knowledge on how you can create a talking animated avatar like me. All right, let me jump to my money machine real quick. Just give you my money. Yo, bro. Yo, what's up? Listen, before we get started, what I'm about to reveal isn't just another basic tutorial, right, Andrew? Jax, I've watched every video out there on creating AI avatars. No one's even touched on our method. We need to jump on this as soon as possible before anyone else catches on. Let's do this. In this video, I'm not just going to show you how it's done. I'm going to reveal the only way to do it right. Believe me, we've asked ourselves countless times if this is something we should even share with the world. But hey, here I am, about to lay it all out for you. I'll show you the method that made us who we are, and believe me, it can do the same for you. Because I know that a lot of you wondered and tried to figure out how we created our talking avatar. Some of you even tried to expose our methods, but none of those videos ever came close to cracking our code. After all, once you know our secret, you'll understand why no one else could figure it out. So by the time you finish watching, you'll know exactly how to start making money without ever showing your face. No cap. He's talking real facts. But here's the real question. Are you ready to learn what we've been holding back? Yo, bro, you already know how to explain it to them? The first thing we need to show is how we created our animated avatar and how they can do it at no cost. Sounds good, man. So I'll explain it for TikTok and Instagram and you for long form content on YouTube. You got it. Normally we'd use Mid Journey to create our animated characters, but since it's a paid tool, we wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to create an animated avatar entirely for free. So we headed over to Leonardo AI. Initially, Leonardo gave us some decent image results, but we soon realized it couldn't deliver exactly what we needed. Specifically, we couldn't generate an avatar with a clean white background, which we needed in order to later remove it and get a transparent background. And then, halfway through, we ran out of credits. Classic, right? So we had two choices. Either wait for the credits to refill by tomorrow or dive deeper to find another tool. We weren't keen on wasting time, so we tried out several text-to-image tools until we found one that finally did the trick. And, as you can see now, it gave us exactly what we needed. An avatar with our signature style and a clean white background. We now took this avatar and uploaded it into Adobe Express. The first thing we did was removing the white background to make it transparent so that the character could fit naturally into the scene later on. After that, we resized the avatar making sure it would fit perfectly within the frame we wanted. Now it's key to place the character in the right spot like it is a part of the environment, like this. Now don't get distracted by the background just yet, we'll dive into that later. The next step is to crop the avatar, focusing on the upper body. By doing this and placing it here, it gives the illusion that the character is sitting behind a desk, creating a professional yet mysterious vibe. Moving on to make it even more realistic, we added a laptop, the same one we use in our setup. So if you want to use the same one, we've included a free download link in the description. With the avatar set in the right place, we began to start to edit the character accordingly. First, we remove the background completely. Don't worry, we'll bring it back later. But for now, it's important to keep the character on a transparent background. Next up, we downloaded the image so that the avatar and the laptop became one single image rather than two separate ones. We then uploaded this combined image to a new page in Adobe Express and used the Remove Object tool to remove the character's mouth. This step is crucial for adding facial animations later on. Now pay close attention because here comes the tricky part. As you can see, the eyes are still visible, so in order to give the character a more mysterious look, we needed to cover the eyes with hair. However, when we used the Insert Object tool to add hair in front of the eyes, the AI didn't quite understand what we wanted. It struggled to place the hair correctly in front of the eyes, so we got creative. Jax and Andrew, when nothing works, remember, there's always a solution, often found in the struggle. So we figured out. To fix this problem, we needed to upload two avatars. And then now, you need to use the crop tool and crop a small section of the hair from the duplicated avatar. Take this part of the hair, just like this, and layer it over the eyes of the other avatar. Now make sure to copy this part of the hair, paste it, and also layer it over the other eye. This gave us the exact effect we were looking for. After that, we downloaded the avatar once more, now with the new download file where the hair is in place, we uploaded it again in Adobe Express to do some final touches. 
because when we looked over here, we noticed that the edges of the hair didn't blend perfectly, meaning we needed to use the Remove Object tool to clean up those spots. So we carefully smoothed out these imperfections, ensuring the hair looked natural and aligned with the rest of the avatar. To make the hairline more smooth, we used the Insert Object tool. We carefully brushed over the edges like this, used Hair as prompt, and clicked Insert. This allowed us to make the avatar's hairline look even more natural. This attention to detail made a huge difference in the overall quality of the character, getting us closer to the final look we wanted. When we were satisfied with how everything looked, we downloaded the character again. To make the characters look even more mysterious, we decided to pull the hoodie further down over the eyes. For this, we followed the same method as with the hair. First, we uploaded the most recent version of the avatar and duplicated it. Then, we cropped just the top section of the hoodie and moved it down over the eyes. Once the hoodie was positioned exactly how we wanted it, we downloaded the avatar again. Then, on a new page, we uploaded that image and used the Remove Object tool to refine the edges of the hoodie, blending everything smoothly. We experimented with a few options until we found the perfect look. Here's a quick tip from us. Notice how our laptop has some cool stickers on it? If you want to give your setup a similar vibe, head over to Flaticon where you can find tons of stickers to personalize your laptop however you like. Next, we uploaded our character into Photopea and added some of our own custom stickers to the laptop for an extra cool look. Then, we headed over to Freepik to find a gaming chair that we could place behind the avatar to make the scene more dynamic. Now, position the gaming chair exactly behind the avatar and resize it so that it perfectly fits the scene. To finish, do the exact same thing as we are doing now. We're going to create a mask. So, select the chair, click on Mask, and then hit Command-I on Mac or Control-I on Windows to invert the mask. Once you've done that, download the avatar as a PNG. So, what we've covered so far are just the basics for creating a talking avatar, right Andrew? Exactly, Jax. But there are still a few more steps we need to walk through before they can use these avatars for long-form YouTube content or short-form videos on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube Shorts. That's true. So, Andrew, you'll handle how to use these avatars for long-form content on YouTube? Yep, I'll break down that part, bro. Awesome. Then I'll cover how they can use these avatars for TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube Shorts. So if you want to learn how you can use these avatars for YouTube, my bro Andrew will explain it on his channel AI Century. First, I went over to Leonardo AI to create the background for the avatar. Inside Leonardo AI, I headed straight to the image creation tool. Before generating the background, I made sure to turn on the image guidance feature and uploaded the background I use for my videos as a reference because if it works for me, it'll most likely work for you too. No need to reinvent the wheel. I also increased the strength of the image guidance to make sure the result stayed close to my reference. Then I typed in the following prompt. Feel free to copy the prompt by pausing the video or check the bio of the video where I've added the exact prompt for you. Next, I set the ratio to 916 to fit formats like YouTube Shorts, TikToks, or Reels. After generating the images, I downloaded one that looked identical to my usual background. Next, I went to Photopea and opened a new project with a 916 aspect ratio. I clicked on Open, I imported the background I had just downloaded, dragged it into the project, and resized it so that it covered the whole frame. Moving on, I used the Select tool to highlight one window pane. I then created a mask and pressed Command-I or Control-I on Windows to invert the mask. After that, I deleted the background layer and selected the other pane of the window. I clicked on the mask layer, this one, and switched to the Brush tool. Next, I brushed over the window pane in order to make it transparent. I then went to repeat this exactly for the other window panes until all were transparent. Once finished, I exported the project as a PNG. After that, I went to YouTube and found a video of a city skyline to use as the background behind the windows. I downloaded the video and got it ready for the next step. I then opened CapCut to merge everything. I uploaded the background with the transparent window panes and placed it on the timeline. Then I added the city background video and resized it to fit within the window frames. I made some color corrections to ensure all the elements blended smoothly together and once everything looked right, I exported the video. For the next part, I converted this video into an image and uploaded it into Adobe Express to make editing easier. First, I needed to use the Insert Object tool, so I clicked on it and started brushing over the lower part of the image. That's the area where I wanted to put the desk. To generate it, I simply typed in the prompt desk. Hit generate and it gave me some good results that I could work with. Like this one, I believed it would perfectly fit the scene. The only thing was that I didn't like the items on the desk because I wanted a clean look. Therefore, 
To keep the desk clean, I brushed over the items to remove them. Once everything looked right, I downloaded the image. Moving forward, I uploaded the image into Photopea and used the Select Object tool. For this part, I needed to isolate the desk, so I selected the above area because this needed to be transparent. Once selected, I created a mask and pressed Command-I to invert it, making the background transparent and leaving just the desk. I then downloaded the file. Next, I opened CapCut and imported the desk into my project. I then placed it on the timeline as a second layer and aligned it perfectly with the duration of the current clip. I also thought of adding a microphone to the scene to spice it more up and give that extra professional look. So I headed over to FreePick, filtered for free downloads, and found a great microphone. In the next step, I added this microphone to my avatar in Photopea and saved the updated image. I then returned to CapCut and imported it into my project. I placed it on the timeline above the other layers and made some color adjustments until everything blended together seamlessly. Finally, I prepared the avatar for lip syncing, which I'll explain next. When creating a lip sync for your character, please don't use pre-made animated mouth videos like some creators suggest you to use. It looks really weird and unprofessional because the lip sync doesn't match with the audio at all. Instead, I'll show you the right way to do it so that the lip sync is clean and synced perfectly with the audio. For the audio, I used Eleven Labs, which is free to use. As an example for this video, I selected the pre-made voice, Adam. I imported my script, generated the speech, and downloaded it. Next, to get an accurate lip sync, I used Adobe Express, which has a variety of pre-made mouths that works great for animations. So I picked this one. I then imported my audio from Eleven Labs and set the background to green so that I can cut it out later on. Moving forward, I clicked on Preview to generate the lip sync animation. Once finished, I got a smooth lip sync that matched perfectly with the audio, so I downloaded it and switched over to CapCut. In CapCut, I uploaded the animated mouth and placed it on the timeline. Then I aligned everything and headed to the Remove Background section. Next, I used the Chroma Key tool to remove the green background by selecting it with the color picker. This left just the mouth visible, which I resized and positioned correctly on the avatar like this. And when everything was in place, I got the final result I was aiming for. Thanks to Jax and Andrew, I've evolved from just a concept into a fully functional AI avatar. I can now engage with any audience on any topic. Think of me as your virtual assistant. I create viral content while you relax and watch me rise to fame. If you made it until this part of the video, congrats! I got an extra bonus for you that will boost your content even more. You've probably noticed that I often switch between a phone and a laptop screen during scenes. Well. I'll show how easy it is to create those screens using Leonardo AI. Starting with the phone screen, I used the image creation tool and turned on the image guidance feature. I uploaded the same phone screen I always use in my videos as a reference and adjusted the ratio to 916. I then typed in my prompt, you can pause the video or check the video's bio. I also decided to tweak the strength a bit in order to get more varied results. So I clicked generate and these were the results Leonardo gave me. I then downloaded the one that looked best. Next, for the laptop screen, I followed the exact same process. I uploaded my reference image, entered the prompt, adjusted the strength slightly, and generated the images. Once finished, I got the following results and finally downloaded the laptop screen that I liked most. After that, I went to Photopea and worked on the phone screen first. I imported it into my project and resized it so that it covered the full frame. I then used the magic tool to select the white screen area. I then created a mask and pressed Command-I to invert the mask, making the screen transparent. Now the laptop screen was a bit more complex, so pay close attention. First, I uploaded the laptop screen that I just downloaded, but this time, I added three layers. You'll see why shortly. Moving forward, I unchecked two of the layers, keeping only one visible along with the background. I then used the Select tool and highlighted the following area. You need to highlight this exact same area. Next, I created a mask, inverted it with Command-I, and moved this layer on top. Then, I made a second layer visible, highlighted the white screen area, created a mask, inverted it, and exported the file as a PNG. Lastly, I went to Adobe Express and uploaded the laptop screen. I'm going to clean up some parts to make it even look more professional. For this, I used the Remove Object tool, so basically, to clean up unnecessary elements, I simply brushed over it and the AI will remove it. Once everything was clean, I used the Insert Object tool to add new items to the scene. As you can see, this keyboard looks trash, so I replaced it by brushing over the area and typing keyboard into the prompt. You just keep generating until you find one that fits. Next, I did the same for adding a mouse into the scene. I brushed over the area, typed the prompt, and clicked Generate. 
Also, a quick note. Before downloading, you need to remove the background in order to make the screen transparent again. Once that's done, you can export the file. As a thank you for watching this video until the very end, here's the special bonus for you. I've saved you the trouble of creating these screens from scratch by putting together a PSD file that you can download for free and easily customize in Photopea. I've included three screens, a front view, a laptop's point of view, and a phone view. Let me quickly explain how to edit them. To hide or unhide layers, simply click on the eye icon. If you want to place an avatar in front of the laptop, just upload your avatar and position the layer between these two layers like this. Then finally resize it to fit. Moving on to the phone screen, I've created one with four different skin tone options, so that you can easily adjust them depending on the skin color of your avatar. Also, as for the laptop's point of view, I'll show how to easily fully customize it to your preferences. First, you can change the mouse color to purple, red, green, yellow, orange, or blue. You've got plenty of options. You can also change the logo by double-clicking on it and then type in your new logo. If you didn't already, please do so, thanks. Finally, you can easily switch out the background by double-clicking on it as well. Easy. So, now I've saved you some time so you can get right to creating awesome content. I can't wait to see the content you all will create. Peace out.